DJs, are you taking the time outside of the DJ booth to set yourself up for success inside of the DJ booth? Today we're going to be looking at a way to prepare in between your events to make sure your DJ sets are on point. Now, if you're new here, I would like to welcome you. My name is Cadence, and on this channel, we talk about everything nightlife and club DJ. Now, if that sounds interesting to you, I would invite you to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you know when I'm coming out with new content so you don't miss a thing. Now, let's open up Record Box and get into it. Okay guys, we are in Record Box and I pulled up a track. I'm not gonna go through every little nuance and detail because this would be like an hour long video and I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna just go by step by step and show you how I prep my tracks and just walk you through it and talk you through it. So the first thing I do is I look at the BPM 90 and I look at the B grid and both of those look right so I'm going to lock that in. Guys, if you missed my video on beat gridding in record box, I'm gonna link that for you above, check that out. But next thing I would do is start queuing. Now, I always put a first cue point on the first beat of the track and I have a color system. I wrote down a color system I don't know, quite a while ago, and I have ingrained that into memory. If you guys do the same, it will help you a lot. That way, if you're looking at your controllers or an XP1 or something, you can associate a color to a certain portion of the track instead of trying to look at the color. And then if you're on a laptop, look at the little waveform or or CDJ and try and find out which little uh, triangle tick is what cue point. This makes it super, super easy. So I use red for the beginning and I find the first verse, which is right here. And I'm gonna put that as C and here's why. Because I also want another cue point in between those, which is half, half of the intro. The reason why I do that is because A lot of tracks will have a, either a mix out point of four bars or eight bars and now I have the option to do both. So I can mix in using only four bars, I can mix in using eight bars if I need to and I don't have to find that middle point. So vocals start here and I put that as yellow and from then on I'm going to just try to find the choruses of the song. <laughs> Here's one, and I mark these as green. You can mark them any color that you please. I found that one easily because the waveform here and the waveform here are very similar. So that's how I was able to find that so quickly. There's probably another one around here, even though the waveform looks different. This looks like a buildup, so. Sure enough, there's another chorus. I put a cue point at the beginning of the outro. Those little hi-hats told me that that's a break, that's, a, uh, that's halfway through the outro. So, and I put another one there, again, for the option to either mix with either four bars or eight bars. So here's a big reason why I color the choruses the same and I like to find them throughout the track. Um, say I'm playing and I get to cue point D, but I wanna make this track shorter. I don't wanna play through the entire thing. 
I can skip sections of the song by using these cue points. Say I get, I'm playing and I get to cue point D. Well, I can skip this whole section of the track by pressing this cue point on time. I'll show you what I mean. And just like that, we've skipped this whole portion of the track. And you can do that over here as well. You, as long as you know that those are choruses, and you do because they're the same color, it's the same part of the track, then you're able to do that. The more options, the better. And that's why I find the choruses and color them the same. Lastly, now that your cue points are set and they're all colored up, you can go over here if you'd like to and name your cue points. Um, most of the time I don't do this only because I remember the colors. So this is just an extra step that I personally don't need to take. Maybe if you're incorporating this color system into your tracks for the first time, this might be something you want to do to help remember. When I started using a colored system like this, I just wrote it down on a piece of paper and then I went through and um, named all my cue points and by now their memory. It really, really does help a lot, guys. And that's pretty much it as far as finding useful places to put your cue points and then coloring and naming them so that you know what they are. So guys, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments section. I will be happy to answer you. If you have any video suggestions, put those down there too. I have a whole bunch of stuff coming down the pipeline, so stay tuned. If this video helped or inspired you in any way, then hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you know when I'm coming out with new videos, and I'll talk to you soon.